Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today we're going to paint some azaleas in watercolor pencils, and I'm actually going to try out some brand new pencils that I just got that were pretty cheap at AC Moore, and they are the Fantasia set of 36 watercolor pencils, and I was kind of, I, you know, I wasn't looking for more watercolor pencils, but they had these on special for $16 for a set of 36, and I'd heard about this brand, I'd seen it online before, but I've never used them, or I didn't know anybody else that had, so I thought I would get them and give them a try try. They're a regular $25, I think, and they're on sale for $16, and online I see them everywhere for $30. So at AC Moore, if you have one locally, they should be on special. The cash, uh, the lady at the cash register said that, um, and this is something they're going to keep stocking and it's a manager special and uh, so hopefully they run the same deals where you are and with my teacher's discount I got a great deal on them so I swatched them out just to kind of get a feel for them and see at how vibrant the colors were so what I did was I like colored half the block with the color and then pulled it down with water and I was really impressed with it and then I went and got my swatch of my Derwent's which are like my favorite watercolor pencils that I'm always recommending and I was impressed I mean the colors look as nice as um as a lot of the Derwent colors so I mean I am super, super impressed here. And now I don't know about light fastness uh, or anything. Um, I didn't see that information on the tin and the large, the, the biggest set I saw online was 36. So, I mean, that might be it for the line. It looks like it probably is, whereas Derwent's come in 72 and Albert Drawer, you can get it up to 120 different colors. So, you know, obviously keep that in consideration when you're buying, but with watercolor pencils, since you can blend them, I think that it's, um, it's a really good investment. And uh, I was pretty pleased because I teach classes and it's nice to be able to get a good deal for my students as well so let's do some painting we're gonna start by sketching on our flower and I'm looking at my swatch chart here which is another reason I like to do this when I first get a set of pencils so I can see what my colors actually look like and I think I'm gonna start by sketching in with a number 45 which is um, I don't see a, I don't see a name printed on here. It looks kind of like a um, burnt sienna type of color, and I am going to move this other tin out of the way so it, my pencils stop chasing me around the table. I'm going to sketch in a stem here for my flower, and they they color very smoothly. I don't want to put on too many lines yet, just because I am just getting started here, and I'm going to use number ten. Let me find that number ten pencil. Here we go. Uh, and I think I'm actually going to get the 11 too because that's a little bit lighter. I'm going to sketch on where I want my big flowers to be and I'll put a link in the video description to the reference photo that I'm using. It's from Paint My Photo. Um, the photographer is Cheryl Marie. I don't think I've ever painted one of her pictures before. This is kind of like a trumpet style flower, so I'm going to sketch the trumpet in. And of course, use whatever pencils you have. Don't feel like you have to run out and buy these if you already have watercolor pencils. Use what you have. And I'm going to grab number 29, that green, and just put in a couple leaves here. This is going to be a pretty quick little uh, demonstration here. Just want to see how these pencils perform. I just got them. Um, the other day. I got another kind of pencil too that I'll be reviewing that I wasn't as impressed with and they were more expensive so I'm kind of bummed about that. Um, Alright, so I've got a, my, my design kind of laid out the way I want it. Now I'm going to go in and add um, some details and I've switched over to my darker, my darker color. I'm just kind of putting a dot in the center and I'm going to go in and add the petals. Let's kind of sketch them in. I, I don't, I kind of try to space them out and then fill in in between. You know, do whatever works well for you. That works well for me because it keeps me from having um, all my petals kind of clumped in or um, not very well dispersed. And over here, this we have some foreshortening here. This is going to be a little bit more challenging. It looks like we've got another petal kind of coming up over here. I like azaleas. We can actually grow those pretty well in Maine. There we go. Get these. I like, I like the trumpety, trumpety type of flowers. 
Okay, and this, we're going to switch over to our green. I, I'm feeling so mellow today. There we go. And can bring a little bit of brown into there. And I am going to need a little bit darker of a green. And I'm just looking at my swatches. I think I'm going to go with that 39. So when you do swatch something out, it's really helpful if you write the numbers, color numbers down there. Because when you go back and you look... Um, it can be very confusing to try to find the colors that you were, um, let me be able to go with 32, that you were originally looking for. I mean, these are indexed pretty well. Like, see, this one's 32. You know, they're pretty close, but it, it always helps to have the actual numbers on your swatch. All right, so now I'm going to go in. I'm going to add some of the shadows here. This darker pencil. I'm working on a watercolor greeting card, the Strathmore watercolor greeting card. I get them in bulk. I get a hundred, the hundred packs because I use these actually when I teach my watercolor classes at the library because I find that I don't want my students to go with a half finished project because I get different people every month. That's the thing with like the, a drop in class. Um, you'll get some people back every month, but then you'll get people that will come and then you won't see them again for a couple months. So you don't want to send them home with something half done or have take a couple classes to finish something because they might not come back and then you'll have people dropping in that didn't start with you guys. So by working on the watercolor cards, I find that we can get through that in an hour and a half class. And, um, and everybody leaves with something finished. And then, you know, they can always pop it in an envelope and mail it off if they want to, um, which I think is kind of kind of fun. I mean, sometimes people are like, oh, you know, I'm not happy with it. I don't want to see it again, but they'll mail it off. Or, you know, a lot, most of the times, though, when they see it the next day, they're happy with it. Now I'm going to actually, I think I'm going to start by coloring in the entire flower with this lighter pink color. So when I get a, a pencil out to use, what I do is I leave them all out of my table, the colors that I've been using, so I'll go back to those before I reach for new colors. I feel like it helps keep my, um, my pictures fresh and harmonious. You can see the texture of the paper there. Now if you were using this on a hot press paper, you wouldn't see that texture. I'll be curious to see how quickly these wear down. Typically, if you find a student grade pencil that performs well, a lot of times it wears down really quickly. Um, so we'll see with these. These don't feel like they're wearing down like as quickly as a Reeves or a Prima, um, but they release color like a Derwent. So I'm very impressed with, um, with this line. I'm going to recommend it to my students since it is such a good buy right now. And I don't know how long they're going to have that sale. But if you're if you are a teacher, if you can bring in your pay stub, at least our AC Moore there, that's you know, that's good enough for them. Because um, I'm not a public school teacher. I do classes um, for the town, for the library, but I'm not a public school teacher. And like Joanne's, you have to bring in like a school ID. With uh, with AC Moore, all they ask for is a pay stub, so it's or some other proof, and uh, that works out really well, um, really well for me. Alright, so now I'm just kind of putting in some of the darker shadowed areas with that darker red that I was using to sketch with. And this is going to be a pretty quick demo here, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. And maybe a little bit more brown on the stems. I feel like I need to have a little bit of yellow in here, so I think I'm going to grab number four, which is nice warm yellow. Almost border borderlining on orange, but I feel like I want little bits of that kind of sun color in here and some of the leaves maybe even um, in the middle I'm going to be putting stamens on but I'm going to wait until the um, I'm going to wait until I've already wet the paper so then I can just kind of go in with a pencil and do it that way I'm going to use a number six round for this and I'm going to start with my stem. And then go on to the leaves. And then you can get a good idea of uh, the amount of coloring, how, how much color we're going to get there. The two ones probably release a little bit more color. It's hard to say, you know, because you try to compare it's hard to do if you made your swatches at different times. You might have pressed harder with one pencil than the other. And I like to turn my work around so that I'm comfortable when I'm working. That's why I like to clip it to a little piece of foam core when I'm working. Keeps it from buckling too, too badly. 
You can always tape it down, but I like to tape it on a board or something like that so I can actually pick it up and move it. It does keep it, um, your work will look a lot more comfortable if you don't have those awkward lines from, you know, trying to bend your arm around to make it, you know, to reach it well. Now I want to have a little bit more shadow on those leaves, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my pencil as a watercolor paint and I'm just going to, with my wet brush, pick up some pigment. I always like to try that on a um, on a new pencil too because some of them work better than others. I think it says to avoid um, dipping the pencil into water on the container. I think I, yeah, avoid dipping the pencils into water as this will damage the colored lids. But, um, but I, and I've also seen that on other pencils too. All right, now I'm actually going to go in and add some veining with this same pencil. Just a little bit of uh, detail, not a lot. You can't really see the veining too much, but I did want to get some darker color in there. I really don't think these are bad for the price. Which is good because I was really unimpressed with the uh, with the other pencils I just bought. <laughs> it's all about adding those uh, adding those glazes and those layers because I mean look at these look at the the three leaves up top look at those compared to these down here where I haven't added any any of the glazes any of the extra color it really makes a big difference I think. And you know, do these do this with whatever you have. But if you are looking for an affordable set of pencils, these are not bad. I think when you go with colored, but they do. They also had the same deal on their colored pencils. I did not grab any of those because I have so many colored pencils. Um, but and, and honestly, I have to say that if you, when you're doing like a wax colored pencil, you're much better off to get the biggest set you can afford just because, you, you know, you're not going to use all those colors in one setting, but it's really nice to have them because I, it seems like the smaller sets of colors are always missing something, like they maybe underrepresent on pinks or purples or, um, or they don't have a vivid red or something, you know, it always seems to be like they're missing something that's really critical for some of your artwork. So I, even like the higher quality, like the color soft I have, I only have a 24 set and I find that I'm, I'm reaching for my Prisma colors because of that. All right, so we're gonna let that dry and I think I wanna add maybe a little bit more brown to my stems. Maybe even go with a darker brown. I'm finding that brown is really a little light. So this is the 50, number 50. I think I'll just sketch some in there really quick. A couple spots. And add a little water to that. Okay, now let's go over to the petals and work on those for a bit. I just want to liquefy the color. We're using very pale shades here. I like to skip around because that way you'll get these hard edges on the edge of the petals and it looks a little bit more natural. Just going around and liquefying. We'll go over here. We'll start off with this space right under there. The colors become a lot more vivid once you add the water. And sometimes it's not the case. Sometimes you add water to watercolor pencils and they just wash up to nothing or um, or you just see the scratchy lines and you can't seem to, to liquefy them. And I'm gonna go back over here and I like to, um, after I rinse my brush off, I pinch the bristles and that seems to just remove those big drops of water. You don't really wanna have the big drops there. You wanna just kinda of have um, it reasonably damp, but you don't want it if, if it, you get a drop of water on your paper, that can be really hard to, to manage. And we'll go in here. Like the, there, I had really too much water there where I just did that. 
I didn't pinch it. Pinch it, pinch off the extra. And my petals are not dry next to the other ones, but I did give them a chance to let the paint kind of set up on the edges to uh, kind of get that, um, uh, get that hard edginess. Now I'm going to put the stamens in. And I'm going to cheat and I'm going to dip my water in there even though the package says not to. Because I'm a rebel. I don't see any problem with that. I think probably they say that so that you don't end up um, leaving it in the water. And a couple more over here. Then I'm going to go in with that dark brown and I'm going to darken in the uh, spots on the top of those little stamens. Just like so. All right, and now I'm going to let it dry so we can go back in with some glazing for shadows. Okay, that's dry. I wanted to put a little water droplet up here because there is one on the photo and I thought it was really pretty. So I switched over to number 16 because that's what I'm going to use for my shadows. It's kind of like a, uh, it's that color right there, nice mauve color. And I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow underneath this, that oval that I put down. And then I just rinse my brush off and get any extra water off. I'm just going to wet it underneath. And let that color flow and then I'm just going to go in the up inside um, top of it bring some of that color on the inside of it okay and then I'm gonna let that dry and I'll sh and we'll like use that little knife to pull out the highlight that's really all we need to do for that I'm going to go in and color in some of these shadowy areas made by overlapping petals and whatnot And you know, it's, you don't have to put all this in here. I mean, it can be a little confusing. Um, I'm looking at the photo on my web, on my um, computer right now. Whoops, too much water in there. To figure out where I want to put my shadows. But um, you could always just do it on the petals that are kind of underneath if you don't want to try to attempt the sunlit look. And that would be fine too. And you can also pick up the color from your paintbrush like this, just like I've shown you before. And go in and add it to your picture that way. Whatever is easiest for you, whatever you like the look of best. I like to keep it kind of easy breezy with these um, with these little flower illustrations. I think they make really wonderful little cards and they're so fun to mail off, especially when, you know, you can paint them up, get a little practice and, you know, have fun with it. So now what I'm going to do is actually um, make my highlight on the dewdrop and we're going to be all done. Okay, you might want to lift out a little bit of the bottom, the inside of the the uh, petal just kind of lift it out a little bit to make it glow along the bottom of uh, the bottom is center of the drop like I did right there nothing too crazy just a little bit I'm gonna re-add my highlight my shadow underneath it's hard I should have demonstrated this on a larger one I do have a video on doing dew drops and then just I just put my um, shadow back in and that has to dry I'm just gonna zap it real quick with my heat tool so we can dry it up and then we're just going to put that highest highlight right there at the top and since I didn't plan on it when I was sketching it I'm just going to do it right here with a little knife so there we have our sparkly little highlight and that's all there is to it I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I'll zoom it out so you can see the entire thing right now and um, if you like those pencils they're called Fantasia I picked them up at AC Moore but you can get them online as well please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and until next time happy crafting